Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Betting Show and the Golf Betting System podcast. We're back with the 2023 Butterfield Bermuda Championship. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit gambleaware.org for more information and of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. Yes, golf betting system. I have just launched, just just published my Butterfield Bermuda Championship betting preview for the PGA Tour. Loads of course, uh, loads of form statistics on there and of course, uh, patented new style predictor models. You can run as many predictor models as you would like. Right, what do I need from you guys? Of course, 100 likes for this video would be much appreciated. I know that 50% of you watching this won't have subscribed to the channel. So please press the subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are switched on. You can follow me on X at Bamford Golf. Uh, and of course, it'd be great to know who you are backing this week at the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. The second from last PGA Tour event of 2023. It feels like an ultra marathon, but we are getting there. We're also getting plenty of WDs for this week's Bermuda Championship. We've just had Eric Van Royen, although that is completely understandable after the events of yesterday. And we've also just had Chesson Hadley. I hope you were on Eric Van Royen last week. I saw prices up to 100 to 1 available on Monday. I know that my golf betting system colleague, Barry O'Hanrahan, also managed to double dip as it goes in play and pre-event on Eric Van Royen. I know a lot of you were on him last week. Congratulations on a very, very popular win. I ended up with two players tied for 10th place but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes right the 2023 butterfield bermuda championship don't forget you can follow me on x at bamford golf and subscribe to the channel right the course this week it is a beautiful course port royal golf course in southampton bermuda so Robert Trent Jones, 1970 original, had a recent renovation in 2009. I categorise it unsurprisingly as coastal. It's resort in nature, depends on the wind, uh, in terms of the scoring that is, resort level. So I think, well, anything 19, 21, 22, I don't see it being as low as what we saw last week at El Cardinal, but it's gonna be birdies galore again. It's also a short golf course. Par 71. The length is 6,828 yards. Holds with water hazard 7. Acres of fairway 21. That compares to something like 80-something last week. Fairways, in terms of their agronomy, there's a difference. Front 9, 419 Bermuda grass. Back 9, a mix of that 419 Bermuda grass and Zuija. The rough, Bermuda with Zuija. Greens, large, 8,000 square feet on average. They feature Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. Now, it has to be said that this part of the world has had some serious weather issues. Various different, uh, different tropical storms. Um, I saw some humongous um, rainfall numbers for September. I don't think the course is going to be in prime um, condition from what I've seen. It's definitely, definitely going to be on the soft side. I can't see anything bar that just with the sheer amount of water the, the course has taken over the preceding three weeks and even over the preceding weeks, a week itself. I've spotted that the golf course uh, received 90 millimetres of rain in the build-up to the event last week. 
So yeah, 307 millimetres in October total, 90 millimetres across the past week. I think we're going to see soft fairways and soft greens. Uh, it's going to be slightly colder than last year, 21 to 23 degrees Celsius. That's 70 to 73 Fahrenheit, so pleasant enough. Winds. And as we know with coastal golf, winning score tends to be driven by the strength of the winds. They look light Thursday, light Friday. Um, we're also then seeing an increase in those winds. 15 to 25 mile an hour gusts southwesterly on Saturday, and then that completely reverses. 15 to 25 miles an hour northeasterly on Sunday. Fascinating to see how A, that affects scoring, and B, how it really does affect the golf course with a complete 180 degree reversal with the same strength of wind if this forecast via uh, wind finder is correct. Key skills are required. Now, can't help you with strokes gained. As you know, if you are a golf betting nut and you've got to this stage of the season, you know that when the PGA Tour goes to courses outside of the United States, they don't take the full strokes gained technology. All I will say is, going back to Brendan Todd, this will be the fifth renewal of the, of the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. Uh, and just averaging through of those that made the cut, where the champions have been, driving distance 30th, Driving accuracy 26th, greens and regulation 23rd, scrambling 18th, putting average 6th. It's very rare that skill sets and those averages increasingly get more important the closer you get to the green. But here, 18th for scrambling and 6th for putting average. It really is a putting contest. And just when you look at the numbers, the winners here, Brendan Todd, Brian Gay, Lucas Herbert and last year Seamus Power all had decent seasonal strokes gained passing statistics going into the tournament. Predictor model top 10. I've just run my predictor. Uh, it actually included in the top 10 both Chess and Hadley and Eric Van Royen. They are WDs. Don't forget. Golf Bank System, I will put a link in the description to the predictor model that I have used. Some absolutely fantastic data in there that you can crunch away free of charge. Don't forget, follow me on X at Bamford Golf. Also, the Golf Betting System podcast is available each and every week on this Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel. Throw me a like. Right, top 10 of my model. Uh, bookmaker of the week has to be bet 365. Eight places each way. I have got them across three of my four tips that I literally released within the last 30 minutes over here in the UK. On top of that, right now across the predictor model, they are uh, market best price and eight places each way if I are there each way extra facility on seven of the top 10 in the predictor. 10, Adam Long, 70 to one with William Hill, William Hill, eight places each way. If I mention each way places, all, of course, are 50 odds. Nine is Luke List, 25 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Eight, Ryan Palmer, 50 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Seven, Ben Griffin, 22 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way via their each way extra facility. Six is Mackenzie Hughes, 35 to 1 with Bet365, eight places. Five, Akshay Bhartia, 18 to 1 with 365, eight places. Top four, Harry Hall on a putter's track, 66 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. We've got Alex Naren, 25 to 1 with Bet Fred. Two, Adam Scott, 16 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. And number one, Brendan Todd, 18 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Each way extra, you get those eight places each way at 50 odds. Instead of the five places each way, I caught the odds, which is their default market. Rolling eight was eight week statistics. We didn't get rolling strokes gained numbers across the Zozo Championship, the Worldwide Technology Championship, 
Oh, it just goes on because we're playing all of these um, events overseas, which makes those skill set rankings completely irrelevant and inaccurate. However, we do have strokes gained total numbers. I'm going to take you through the top 25 in this field. Strokes gained total, strokes gained current form over the past eight weeks. This goes back to the Irish Open and includes both the PGA and DP World Tour. Tie for 24th, Alex Smalley and Austin Smotherman. 23 is Patton Kazaya fighting hard for his PJ to a card. 22, Troy Merritt. A tie for 20th, Kramer Hickok, another one fighting for his PJ to a card. And Mackenzie Hughes. 19, Henrik Norlander. 18, Martin Trainer. A tie for 16th, Ben Griffin and Martin Laird. 15 is Adam Scott. 14 is Doug Gim. A tie for 11th, Lucas Herbert, who won here two years ago, Kelly Craft and Ryan Moore. Top 10 now. 10 is Taylor Pendrith. 9 is Lanto Griffin. 8 is Tom and Dietrich. 7, Mark Hubbard. 6, Akshay Bhartia. 5, Vince Whaley. 4, and didn't he play well last week? Camillo Vijegas. Three, Hank Lebioda. Two, Luke List. Number one, Brendan Todd. Todd, List, Lebioda, Vijegas, Whaley, Bartia, Hubbard, Dietrich, Griffin, Lanto Variety. Pendrith, Lucas Herbert, Kelly Craft, Ryan Moore. Top 12 strokes gained current form over the past eight weeks. Historic odds of winners. Four renewals. 22 to 1 was Seamus Power last year. Uh, Lucas Herbert was 80 to 1 in 2021. 2020 was Brian Gay at 200 to 1. And 2019 was Brendan Todd at 100 to 1. Probably doesn't take out or uh, take a brain surgeon to work through. But the overall average is 100 to 1. It's 101 to 1, but 100 to 1 is the average winning price of the winners here. We've got a 22 to 1, an 80 to 1, 200 to 1, 100 to 1. Pretty meaningless stats. Strokes, uh, official world golf ranking of also of those that have won. We had uh, last year, Seamus Power was 48th in the world. Lucas Herbert, 57th, Brian Gay, 328, Brendan Todd, 525. Don't forget I'm available at Bamford Golf on Twitter. Throw us a like, subscribe to the channel if you're still with us. It was really appreciated. Right, my uh, four selections this week. First up, I managed to get 20. 25 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way, 2 points each way, on Ben Griffin. St. Simons Island, Georgia resident. He's already got three top five finishes from 39 PGA Tour events, and they tell you exactly what the world number 105 is all about. Fourth at the 22 Wyndham Championship. Third here at Port Royal last year. Second last month at the Silence and Farms Championship. He loves Bermuda grass golf courses. You can also kind of see that from 2022. Amongst the litany of top five finishes, he finished second at the Sun Goes Classic. That's at Lakewood National in Florida. And also he finished second at the BMW Charity Pro-Am in Thorn Bay at the Thornblade Club, South Carolina. Both of those golf courses feature Bermuda grass. Lakewood is Bermuda grass, both tee, green, rough and green. He just loves the Bermuda and it all makes perfect sense. He's 56 in the FedEx Cup standing, so he's get he's got one of those next 10 spots as it stands. I'm sure he's coming here with confidence. I'm sure that he would like to put right some of the wrongs that we've seen when he's right at the top of the leaderboard on a Sunday. He was the 54-hole leader here 12 months ago. He was, of course, the 54-hole leader at the Sanderson Farms last month. Ended up in a five-man playoff. Threw it away on 18, effectively. But as we know with these youngsters, 
Some of them take longer. In fact, just with golfers in general, some of them take a long time to get that first victory. Griffin is a real talent. So Ben Griffin, two points each way. I got 25 to one with William Hill. The rest of my selections all with Bet365. Again, two points each way, 25 to one with Bet365 this time. Eight white places each way via their each way extra facility. Taylor Pendrith. He's had a third at the Shriners Open plus 15th last week at the Worldwide Technology Championship in Mexico. He now has his full 2024 playing privileges all sewn up. The thing I do like about Pendrith, and we saw this last year with him, he racked together once he found his game, six top 13 finishes across seven tournaments. That included 13th at the players, then he had an injury break, but then 8th at the BMW Championship in the in the. Uh, playoff series also second at the rocket mortgage classic proper player was a captain's pick for t uh, international team at the president's cup he's a momentum player so we've already seen third at the shriners 15th last week i think the positivity continues don't forget two years ago the the year that herbert won the australian taylor pendriff shot a 61 on friday and a 65 on Saturday to lead by three shots going into Sunday. We then saw 15, 20, even gusting 30 mile an hour conditions on the Sunday. Pendrith couldn't hold on. He was still a factor until the 17th, mind. Um, but yeah, two years on, a better player, a more all-rounded player. Would not be surprised if either Taylor Pendrith or Ben Griffin uh, became first-time PGA Tour winners this week. An experienced player up next, a player who is still 35 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way via their each way extra facility, a player that can win on the PGA Tour, and a lot of them can't, a player that also has two PGA Tour victories on Bermuda Grass Greens, one the 2016 RSM Classic, one the 2022 Sanderson Farms Championship at Jackson. We know that the RSM Classic next week's tournament is played by the coast at Sea Island. And you look at Mackenzie Hughes. He's got a 10th at Pebble Beach, a 2nd and a 3rd at Corrales Golf Club. 1st and 2nd at that seaside uh, course, the RSM Classic. And of course, a 6th at the 2021 Open Championship. If it's windy, if it's soft, it doesn't really matter with Hughes. And the other thing with Hughes is, despite having a poor year, he started 2023, believe it or not, in the top 35 in the world rankings, has now fought back from slipping outside the top 100 last week, back into the top 100. He was a quarter finalist this year at the WGC Dell Technologies match play. And this is the thing with Hughes. When he finds a level of fairways and greens that he's kind of got to at the moment, he's so dangerous because his scrambling, when he does miss greens, his chip-ins around the green from a strokes gained around the green positive perspective, and the fact that he's an unbelievable putter, come together and marry up very, very well. Mackenzie Hughes, one and a half points each way, 35 to one, I have got. And finally, an 80 to one chance. Not a bad strategy here when we've had winners of that ilk in the past. Lucas Herbert, 100 to one, Brendan Todd. I've gone, and I often pick this, well, I haven't picked him for a while, but I pick him on Bermuda grass tests. I like him on shorter tests. I like him by the sea. He's actually finished second, believe it or not, at Torrey Pines in the past. He's also finished second at Sea Island in 26D. He's also finished fifth at Sea Island on top of that as well. I just think that Henrik Norlander, whose PGA Tour full playing privileges aren't 100 percent guaranteed he's 121st in the FedEx Cup standings right now so he can't just turn up and miss the cut he needs to give it full focus get a decent finish either here or next week at the RSM to guarantee full playing privileges for 2024 he hasn't had them this year at all he's been playing off partial stayers I just think that will kick Norlander on you may remember Norlander a few, uh, last month was in the same playoff as Ben Griffin at the Sanderson Farms Championship, the one that Luke List took out with that mammoth 
putt on the 18th green. So Norlander is clearly playing better stuff. He's now got into that top 125. He's only got four spots below him in terms of breathing room. I think he's going to love the course. He was in the top 21 or so here on his tournament debut a couple of years ago here at Port Royal. And he's just playing some good golf. And he's a very, very sparky sort who can go well on low scoring tests, can go well by the coast. And he's very, very apt on Bermuda grass. Greens, indeed, indeed, five of his last eight top tens on the PGA Tour have come on Bermuda grass at Sea Island, at Wiley Country Club, where they play the Sony Open. And he's also had three top five finishes at the Country Club of Jackson. Henrik Norlander, he's my last player into the squad. So Henrik and Norlander are 80 to 1. Mackenzie Hughes at 35 to 1 and 225 to 1 shots. Taylor Pendriff and Ben Griffin. Don't forget at Bamford Golf on X. Follow this channel. Press that subscribe button and it would be fantastic if you let me know who you're backing at the Batterfield Bermuda Championship. And tomorrow, why don't you come back to the channel and listen to the Golf Betting System podcast? Been a blast. See you again soon.